Today, I'm going to talk about how to pick the right gut health diet plan, so stay tuned. Hey there, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Amanda Malachewski. I'm a functional nutrition health coach and a digestive and allergy detective. For more tips about how to go from gut chaos to gut confidence, please consider subscribing and be sure to hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every week. Every single day right now, I'm meeting new people who are super confused about what is the right diet for them to eat to help their gut symptoms improve. So by the end of today's video, I'll share my top three diets that I recommend for clients who have gut symptoms, and I'll also help you understand how to choose the right one for you. And if you're already in the position of having tried several of these things and you're still not getting results, I'm also gonna give you a few tips to understand what to do from there. I really wanna save you guys some time by helping you get to the right neighborhood of diets more quickly, so let's get started. All right, so you're constipated, you have diarrhea, you're bloated, you have gas, maybe you have reflux, some kind of digestive problem. And food is absolutely one of the very best places to start because often there are foods that we're eating that are aggravating things. But where do you start? What's the first place to go? It's really important here to narrow down the choices because I'm sure if you spend any time at all on Google or YouTube, you're aware that there are a lot of choices, everything from autoimmune paleo to keto to paleo to FODMAP diets and whatnot. So where are you supposed to start? There are really only three main diets that I'm recommending for my clients, and these are the paleo diet, the low FODMAP diet, and a low histamine diet. And here's why. Most gut food symptoms are related to either the top three inflammatory foods, which are gluten, dairy, and sugar. It's related to foods that are fermenting in the gut, or it's related to a histamine intolerance. That's not to say there aren't other options, but in the vast majority of cases with my clients, one of these three diets addresses the food irritation that's happening and can reduce symptoms. So how do you choose which one of these diets is the right one for you? And I'm gonna help you break down the answer to this question. And the truth is that the answer lies inside of you and your symptoms. So we're gonna take a little self quiz right now and let's, let's talk this through. I want you to see which category you feel like you fit into the most. So if you are new to your digestive symptoms relatively or you're newly aware that food might be causing some of your problems um, and you're kind of eating just an ordinary diet, you go out to eat a lot, you cook at home, either way, you kind of just eat whatever and you haven't ever really paid very much attention to what's going into your body, the place for you to start is with something like the paleo diet or the Whole30, which is basically a paleo diet template. And the reason for this is that a lot of the common foods that people eat, like um, bread and pasta and crackers and cereal and milk and cheese and pizza and things like this, um, have a lot of the most common inflammatory foods. This is gluten, dairy, and sugar. And the diet focuses instead on just getting your body real whole foods. And for a lot of people who haven't done this kind of basic cleanup, this diet often resolves a lot of symptoms, not just digestive ones that people may not even have realized were coming from their diet. And what this diet does is it kind of does what's called clears the muddy waters. It clears away the noise that's happening in the background from food symptoms that you might not be aware of. So if you haven't done anything at all yet and you have these new symptoms and you'd like to get started with um, a new diet template to see if food is affecting your symptoms, I would highly recommend starting with the paleo diet or the Whole30, which is basically a paleo variation. Now, if you've already done a basic diet cleanup and you're eating a whole foods diet, but you're still having digestive trouble, or if your symptoms are largely centered around bloating and gas especially, but also constipation and diarrhea, and maybe you've noticed that veggies and fruits and nuts seem to be aggravating your symptoms, then you maybe wanna try on the low FODMAP diet. And it's be this is because the low FODMAP diet removes foods that are um, likely to cause fermentation in your gut. They have fermentable carbohydrates from naturally occurring fibers in those fruits and vegetables and nuts and also dairy products. Now, similar to the paleo diet, the low FODMAP diet does remove gluten and dairy, so you also get a break from those foods on this diet as well. But it does allow some grains and sweeteners, so in a certain way, it's maybe a little bit easier to uh, embark on this diet. 
So the low FODMAP diet has been shown in numerous studies to improve IBS symptoms and quality of life for patients with IBS. So it's definitely a research proven option that I like to bring on board for people who are having trouble. But the trick is, is that it needs to be used properly. There are some very particular ways that you need to implement this diet to get the most benefit from it. So I've made a couple of other videos about this diet and how to use it. So if you feel like the FODMAP diet is the place for you to start, I want to encourage you to check out those other videos and I'll uh, leave a link to um, those below this video. But you could get started with my video called what is the low FODMAP diet and how do I use it? I'll leave a link for that up in this corner ah, of my video. So when I see clients who have bloating and gas and diarrhea, but also have some other symptoms like itching mouth or tongue, hives, runny eyes, runny nose, um, itching on the skin or body, plus things like headaches, insomnia, or anxiety, I'm thinking more about a histamine intolerance. So if this sounds like you, a low histamine diet is where I would suggest that you start. This diet removes or reduces foods that are high in histamine or foods that trigger your body to release more histamine. So if this is you, I really encourage you to check out my histamine diet playlist. I'll leave a link for that below this video, but you can get started with the first video in that series, which is histamine intolerance and IBS. I'll leave a link for that up here. So which of these three diets sounds like it's right for you? Leave me a comment below this video between paleo, low FODMAP or low histamine diet. Now, what if you've already worked on this and you've tried one or even all of these diets or other diets and you're still really confused? I'm meeting a lot of people who are in this situation right now and I really wanna help untangle this for you. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that I've noticed that a lot of people don't really use these diets in the way that they're intended. And this can really skew the results that you're getting. So to get the best results from them, you wanna really do a pretty diligent elimination phase of the diet where you really take to heart what the diet is asking you to do and you eliminate the suggested foods for about three weeks, like pretty strictly. I know it's hard, but this is really the best way to get a clear result. And now here's the key part is that once you've done this step, then you want to do some very targeted reintroductions of some of the foods that you've removed to test for a reaction. And this does two things. One, it tells you specifically what your food triggers are. And secondly, it helps you understand what kind of mechanism is at play with your digestive symptoms. So one of my first questions for people uh, when they're still having trouble is, have you done this process really diligently and have you done the reintroductions first? And if they haven't, then I'm politely going to invite you to you know, start from square one again and really do a very diligent process. And if you do this process really correctly, you're gonna come out the other side with some clear information about what your next best steps are. So if you have questions about how to do this, I do have a, a, a whole video about how to do an elimination diet for IBS that I talk about all these steps a little more clearly. So check that video out. Second, food symptom tracking is your very best friend in this situation. Um, if you're trying to really go it alone and not do this step, it can just feel like you're swimming in a complete sea of uncertainty and you have no clarity about what's going on. So I really want to invite you to do some food tracking while you're trying to figure some of this stuff out. So you can spend a week tracking your food, your symptoms, and what your poop is doing. It's a very important diagnostic tool during this time and you can begin to make those connections between what your guts are doing and what you're eating. It's too difficult to keep track of all of these details without this tracking tool. So absolutely important. And I of course do have a whole video about this. So if you need to learn more about this step, check out how to use a food diary for IBS. The third thing to know is that there is a limit to how far you can heal with diet alone. Um, a lot of times I see people trying to force a food or diet solution onto a non-food or diet problem. And so just know that whatever you're doing with your diet, it might not be enough. There might be other pieces of the puzzle that really need to be handled. And this can be things like supporting digestive function with a few particular uh, behaviors or supplements, or you might have infections or other things that need attention. And sometimes we do need to bring more of like a physician or MD or gastroenterologist onto the team to help us sort things out. And this isn't a failure. This is sometimes just what is. 
So if you really feel like you've exhausted all the food things and you've done the elimination diet to a T and you have your diet just super cleaned up and you're super clear on your triggers, but you still are having symptoms, this is an indicator that it's time to invite some new players onto your team or to dig deeper into your root causes. And finally, fourth is that I'm meeting an awful lot of you who are extremely fearful of food. Like you've become just terrified of your kitchens, terrified of the grocery store, terrified of restaurant food, um, just really afraid of what's in food and worrying about every little tiny detail. And so if this sounds like you and this is something that you're experiencing, I really want to um, just bring your awareness to the fact that this kind of thought pattern or stress thinking about food and just worrying about tiny little ingredients or um, really trying to micromanage each and everything in your diet isn't really a helpful mindset to help um, solve this problem. And it often can lead to a further limiting of your diet and and, and it, the stress of it can actually get in the way of your healing. Our guts really work best when they're in what's called the rest and digest phase, when our parasympathetic nervous system is in operation, our just restful, relaxing system. So if this is something that's really plaguing you, I really want to encourage you to invite some kind of mindfulness practice, meditation practice, like get dedicated to a stress relief practice. There's lots of amazing apps out there these days that can help you with this. A really um, easily accessible one is called Calm. It has guided meditations and soothing music and all kinds of other little things that just bring your mindfulness to your stress level and to help calm your uh, nervous system down. So um, you're going to be hearing a lot more from me about this in future videos. I'm just gearing up to add more content about this um, because I believe it's actually paramount and super, super important. So I hope this video has really helped cut through some of the internet BS and opinion noise that's out there and just helped you get clear that you really just need to work in connection and relationship with your own body to learn what's going on. And you really can get some clarity about this topic and get to a place where you're clear either what your triggers are or that diet is maybe not the end all be all and that you need to move deeper into some other steps. Pick the diet that's right for your unique situation, implement the true elimination diet and reintroduction process to get clear. And then if you don't find answers, then you know you need to move on to other options. And if you are struggling with these kinds of issues and you need some additional support, um, I right now am building an online program to help people with this process. And I, um, at this stage, am interviewing people who are in these shoes to learn more about what would be absolutely the best thing to include in this program. So if you would like to learn more about that or would like to help me um, flesh out this program to make it just the absolute best it can be, I really invite you to schedule a short interview with me. I will leave a link below this video for you to schedule a gut health interview with me. It usually takes about 45 to minutes to 60 minutes and it's always a lot of fun. So I hope that I will get to meet you over there. I hope this video helped you clarify where you need to start with your diet and where to go from there. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and liking and send it on to somebody else who you think might need it too. And I look forward to seeing you all next time.